Hi there, my highly valued and highly esteemed and treasured viewers and listeners, and welcome back to your channel of choice. My name is Dr. Nat Arwa. I am a clinical pharmacist by training and by profession. And I am the founder of Progressive Pharmacotherapy Consultants, a premier virtual clinical pharmacy institute for capacity building for healthcare workers. The Virtual Clinical Pharmacy Institute with a difference where patient safety, medication therapy management, and optimal clinical outcomes are very crucial and non-negotiable to us. Here, we seek to remain your premier source of crucial tips for high-impact pharmacotherapy services, so I humbly urge you to sit back and spare me part of your very precious time to share some useful tips with you. In today's video, we'll discuss matters concerning IV admixture of non-antimicrobial medications. And the title is IV admixture of non-antimicrobials made easier. Now, I would like to ask you a rhetorical question, a few rhetorical questions. How comfortable and competent are you when it comes to IV admixture of medications which should be administered via IV infusion? Number two, when was the last time you supplied ready to use medications in bags to the nurses for administration to your patients admitted in the ward? Number three, don't you agree with me that as pharmaceutical practitioners, it is our sole responsibility to ensure that patients receive infusions which are correctly prepared in the correct environment and diluted in compatible fluids. Many of the medications administered via IV infusion are stable in specific pH ranges. They are also compatible with specific IV fluids. Now, some of them are only compatible with either dextrose 5% in water or normal saline and in no other fluid. Now, when such medications are diluted, in IV fluids with which they aren't compatible. Precipitation, denaturing, or even inactivation may occur with or without any obvious change in color or appearance. It is on this background that I have made this video to guide you through the art of correct reconstitution and dilution of infused medications which aren't antimicrobial agents. Remember, if infusions precipitate, they can occlude blood vessels and uh, this may have very serious consequences. Therefore, I strongly feel a time has come for us as pharmaceutical practitioners uh, to take our place to take full responsibility for the medications we dispatch to the wards and to ensure that our patients receive safe infusions when medications can't be delivered via any other routes. I challenge you as a pharmaceutical practitioner to internalize the contents of this video and to use the tips highlighted therein and to play the active role of a pharmaceutical practitioner. I encourage you to resume your key role of compounding, of doing IV admixture in your various institutions. Welcome and enjoy your viewing as we learn together and as we purpose to make a difference in our various institutions. Next, I would like to talk about ibadronic acid, ibandronate. Now, it is compatible with 
5% dexos in water and normal saline. And we should dilute the dose in 100 ml of IV fluid of choice after homogenizing. It should be administered over at least 15 minutes. Now in the treatment of tumor induced hypercalcemia, uh, the dose of ibandronic acid may be added to 500 ml of IV fluid of choice and it may be infused over a longer duration of two hours. Now such solutions are stable for up to 24 hours under refrigeration. Our next product is Ida Rubicin, which is compatible with 5% dexos in water and normal saline. Now we should dilute the dose prescribed in 50 ml of IV fluid of choice and after homogenizing, it can be infused over 10 to 15 minutes. Now such solutions are stable for 72 hours at room temperature and up to one week under refrigeration. Our next product is Infliximab, which is compatible with normal saline only. And we should reconstitute the vial with 10 ml of cell water for injection and obtain a concentration of 10 milligrams per ml. So you add the water to the vial and swirl gently to dissolve the powder. Now in the literature they stress do not shake, otherwise it would form. And it's recommended you allow the solution to stand for 5 minutes. Then the dose can then be further diluted in 250 ml of normal saline and uh, we should add it gently and slowly to the bag and then gently invert the bag several times to homogenize the solution. Now the final concentration should be anywhere between 0 0.4 and 4 milligrams per ml and such solutions should be infused over at least two hours. Next, I would like to talk about Ixa Bepilon, which is compatible with Ringer's Lactate and with Buffered Normal Cell It's a tricky product to reconstitute. So we should dilute the 15 milligram vial with 8 ml and the 45 milligram vial with 23.5 ml of the provided diluent. So we should gen gently swirl and invert the vial until the contents dissolve completely. Now prior to administration, we should further dilute using a non-DEHP container to a final concentration of 0 0.2 to 0 0.6 milligrams per ml in approximately 250 ml of normal saline and this normal saline should be buffered. The pH should be adjusted prior to ixabepilone addition using an equivalent of uh, 2 mL equivalents of sodium bicarb per 250 to 500 ml of normal saline solution used. So it should pay close attention to those fine details in order to obtain a stable product during the IV admix of Ixabepilone. Now after adding the Ixabepilone to the buffered sodium chloride, you should then mix thoroughly and after homogenizing, it should be infused over three hours. Now the administration should be completed within six hours of preparation. And then uh, I'd like to emphasize that this product is stable for six hours at room temperature and room light if we succeed in maintaining a pH range of six to nine. So this product is very sensitive to the pH. Remember that. Next, I would like to talk about the irinotecan, which is the conventional form. It is preferred that we do IV admix using 5% dextrose in water and uh, we should dilute the dose prescribed in 250 to 500 ml of dextrose 5% in water. 
Now, after homogenizing, we should infuse the final solution over 90 minutes. Now, such a solution is stable for up to 24 hours at room temperature and 48 hours under refrigeration. And solutions diluted with normal saline may precipitate if refrigerated. So, in literature, they discourage the use of normal saline in the IV admixture of conventional irinotecan. Now for the liposomal form, it is compatible with both normal saline and with 5% dextrose in water. So it should also be administered by IV infusion over the same duration of 90 minutes. Now the solution diluted for administration in dextrose 5% or in normal saline is stable for up to 4 hours at room temperature and up to 24 hours under refrigeration. And we should dilute the dose that we desire to administer in 500 ml of IV fluid. And uh, we should homogenize by gently inverting. After adding the irinotecan uh, to the bag, we should gently invert to homogenize. And it should be protected from light for it to maintain its stability. Next, I would like to talk about isoprenaline, which is compatible with both 5% dextrose in water and normal saline. Now, if we endeavor to use it for IV continuous infusion, then 1 to 2 milligrams should be diluted in 250 to 500 ml of IV fluid, and the dose should be titrated according to protocol. Now, the IV infusion administered requires the use of an infusion pump for accuracy and such solutions are stable at room temperature and under refrigeration for 24 hours. Next I would like to talk about ketamine which is compatible with both 5% dextrose in water and normal saline. So we should dilute it in the IV fluid to prepare a maintenance infusion with a final concentration of 1 mg per ml or 2 mg per ml in patients who are fluid restricted. Now we should mix well eh, for homogenizing and after dilution we should endeavor to use the solution immediately. Avoid storage for future use. Our next product is labetalone, which is compatible with both normal saline and 5% dextrose in water solutions. So if we intend to use it via continuous IV infusion, then uh, the concentrate should be further diluted using either 5% dextrose in water or normal saline to a final concentration of 1 mg per ml. In other words, we should dilute 200 milligrams in 160 ml of the IV fluid. We should dilute 300 milligrams in 240 ml of the IV fluid. And we should dilute 600 milligrams in 480 ml of the IV fluid. And all these doses after homogenizing should be titrated according to directions from your cardiology or your critical care team. Now, such solutions after homogenizing are stable for 72 hours at room temperature and even under refrigeration. Next, I would like to talk about lansoprazole, which is compatible with both 5% dextrose and with normal saline. So we should start by reconstituting 30 milligrams in the vial with 5 ml of sterile water for injection and the dissolved 30 milligrams should be further diluted in 50 ml of IV fluid of choice and infused over half an hour after homogenizing. Now there is also an unlabeled use in GI bleeding where we bolus and we also administer via continuous infusion. Now the bolus can be obtained by diluting 60 milligrams in 100 ml of IV fluid which is infused over one hour. Now the continuous infusion is obtained by diluting 60 milligrams in 100 ml of IV fluid and then 
final solution is infused at a rate of uh, 10 ml per hour. Now, this solution is stable for 24 hours at room temperature if diluted with normal saline or Ringer's lactate. If you opt to use Dexos 5%, then it's stable for 12 hours at room temperature. Levetiracetam is our next product, which is compatible with 5% dextrose and normal saline. So the dose prescribed should be diluted in 100 ml of IV fluid of choice. And after homogenizing, we should infuse the product, the final solution, over 15 minutes. And such a product is stable for 4 hours at controlled room temperature, anywhere between 15 and 30 degrees centigrade. The next product is Levo Cimendan, which is compatible with 5% dextrose. So we should dilute 5 ml of the concentrated solution using 500 ml of 5% dextrose to obtain a 0 0.025 mg per ml solution. Now, 10 ml of the same concentrate can be diluted using 500 ml of D5W to obtain a 0 0.05 mg per ml solution. Now the dose and the duration of treatment is individualized according to the patient's clinical condition and response to therapy. So the physician or the team managing the patient decides the rate of administration and such solutions are stable for 24 hours at room temperature. Our next product is levothyroxine, which is synthroid, and it's compatible with normal saline. So do not use 5% dextrose in the IV mix of this product. Now we should reconstitute the lyophilized levothyroxine sodium by aseptically adding 5 ml of the normal saline to the vial. Then we should check the vial to ensure complete mixing and dissolution. Then now uh, we can use IV push or we can infuse immediately after reconstitution. You do not need to further dilute in huge volumes. Our next product is magnesium sulfate, which is compatible with both 5% dextrose and normal saline. So one gram should be diluted in 50 ml of IV fluid and homogenized before infusing over half an hour. Two grams should be diluted in 100 ml of fluid, homogenized and infused over one hour. Three grams should be diluted in 100 ml of IV fluid, homogenized and infused over two hours. And four grams should be diluted in 250 ml of IV fluid and infused over three hours. Now for doses of up to six grams, infuse over 8 to 12 hours and for larger doses infuse over 24 hours via continuous infusion if the patient is asymptomatic. And I would like to remind you that somewhere in the literature they say do not freeze the solution after dilution because refrigeration may lead to precipitation or crystallization of the magnesium sulfate and this could occlude blood vessels during infusion. Next, I would like to talk about melphalan, which is compatible with normal saline, so avoid using dextrose 5% in dilution of this product. So we should rapidly inject 10 ml of the supplied diluent into the vial of the lyophilized powder using a sterile needle, and that should then be vigorously shaken immediately. And uh, we should dilute any doses above 25 milligrams to 110 milligrams in 250 ml of normal saline. Now, after homogenizing, this final solution should be infused over 15 to 30 minutes. And we should ensure that we work swiftly enough to complete administration of this IV fluid 
within 60 minutes of reconstitution because the final volume is a very unstable solution. Remember that. Our next product is Mesna, which is compatible with both 5% dextrose and normal saline. Now we should dilute the usual dose in 100 ml of IV fluid of choice, homogenize and infuse over 15 to 30 minutes. Now such solutions are stable for 24 hours under refrigeration or at room temperature. Our next product is Methotrexet, which is compatible with both 5% dextrose in water and normal saline. Now, for doses between 100 and 200 milligrams, we should dilute them in 50 to 100 ml of IV fluid, homogenize, and infuse over 30 to 60 minutes. For doses between 200 and 500 milligrams, they should be diluted in 250 to 500 ml of IV fluid, homogenized, and infused over 30 to 120 minutes. For doses exceeding 500 milligrams, they should be diluted in anything between 500 ml to 1 liter of IV fluid, which should be infused over between 1 and 4 hours. And such solutions after homogenizing are stable for 24 hours at room temperature. Do not refrigerate them. Next product is metoclopramide, which is compatible with both 5% dexos in water and normal saline. We should dilute all doses in 50 ml of IV fluid of choice and after homogenizing, we should then infuse the product over half an hour. Now such products are stable for up to 48 hours without freezing after preparation so long as they are protected from light. Our next product is methyl prednisone, which is compatible with both 5% dextrose in water and with normal saline. So for doses between 60 and 100 milligrams, we should dilute them in 50 ml of IV fluid of choice, homogenize and infuse over half an hour. For doses between 101 and 500 milligrams, we should dilute in 100 ml of IV fluid and uh, infuse as directed after homogenizing. And for doses between 501 and 1250 milligrams, we should dilute in 250 ml of IV fluid and infuse at a rate directed by the clinical team. And in literature, they emphasize that we should not refrigerate this product after dilution. The product is stable for 48 hours at room temperature. Our next product is metoprolol, which is compatible with both 5% dextrose in water and normal saline. For doses of up to 20 milligrams, we should dilute them in 50 ml of IV fluid, homogenize and infuse over half an hour. For doses between 21 and 40 milligrams, they should be diluted in 100 ml of IV fluid, homogenized and infused over one hour. And uh, after homogenizing, such solutions are stable at room temperature for 24 hours. Our next product is midazolam, which is compatible with both 5% dexos in water and normal saline. Now we can opt to administer it via IV infusion after diluting 100 mg in 100 ml to obtain a concentration of 1 mg per ml. Now, a final concentration of 0 0.5 per ml is stable for up to 24 hours when diluted in 5% dextrose or in normal saline while a final concentration of 1 mg per ml in normal saline has been documented to be stable for up to 10 days. Now for continuous IV infusion of midazolam, we may dilute with IV fluids to a final concentration of 0 0.5 or 1 mg per ml.
and administer accordingly as directed by the critical care team. The next product is Melrenone, which is also compatible with both 5% dexos in water and normal saline. So we should dilute 50 milligrams of this product in 200 ml of IV fluid of choice and infuse it after homogenizing at a dose that is dictated by the critical care team. We should titrate according to their directions. Now such solutions after homogenizing are stable at room temperature for 72 hours. The next product is mitomycin which is compatible with both normal saline and 5% dextrose in water solutions. We should reconstitute the powder with sterile water for injection to a concentration of 0.5 mg per ml and uh, we can achieve that by dissolving 5 gram vials using 10 ml of water, 20 mg vials using 40 ml of water, 40 mg vials using 80 ml of water for injection. Now, After the addition of the water, we should shake the vials till the powder dissolves. Now, Such of diluted solutions of the doses prescribed should then be diluted in 50 ml of the preferred IV fluid. After homogenizing, we can then infuse such solutions over 15 to 30 minutes. Now, such solutions are stable for 12 hours at room temperature if diluted using normal saline and for 3 hours if diluted using 5% dextrose. And you are reminded to protect such reconstituted solutions from light for them to retain their stability over those durations I've just specified. Our next product is Midoxantron, which is compatible with both 5% dextrose and normal saline. Now we should dilute the dose in 50 to 100 ml of IV fluid of choice, homogenize and infuse over 10 to 15 minutes. And in literature they stress and emphasize that we should not freeze such IV solutions. Such a product is stable for seven days, both at room temperature and under refrigeration. And the manufacturer recommends and emphasizes that we use the solution immediately after IV admixture. They discourage storage. Next, we look at Celecept, mycophenolate morphetate, which is compatible with dextrose 5% in water. Do not use normal saline here. So we should reconstitute each vial by injecting 14 ml of 5% dextrose, then gently shaking the vial to dissolve the drug. Now to prepare 1 gram dose, we need to further dilute the contents of two reconstituted vials of 500 milligrams each into a total of 140 ml of 5% dextrose. Now to prepare a 1.5 gram dose, we need to further dilute the contents of three reconstituted vials of 500 milligram each into a total of 210 ml of 5% dextrose. Of course, after the addition, we homogenize the contents of the bag before infusing. And we should infuse over no less than two hours. It's emphasized in literature. Now such diluted solutions are stable for four hours at room temperature. So plan your admixture very carefully so that you have an allowance of at least two hours within which to infuse the prepared product. Next, we look at natalizumab, which is compatible with normal saline. Here, we do not recommend you use 5% dextrose in water. Now, we should dilute 300 milligrams of the product in 100 ml of normal saline to a final concentration of 2.6 milligrams per ml. 
So after adding the natalizumab to the bag of normal saline, we should gently invert the contents of the bag to mix. And in the literature, they discourage shaking. They emphasize do not shake. So the final product after homogenizing should be infused over one hour. And uh, it's emphasized that you should use it immediately or refrigerate for use within eight hours of IV admixture. Next, we'd like to talk about N acetylcysteine, which is compatible with 5% dextrose. So, the loading dose, which is 150 milligrams per kilogram, should be prepared in a total of 200 ml of 5% dextrose and infused over an hour after homogenizing. Now, dose 2 which is at a rate of 50 milligrams per kilo, should be diluted in 500 ml of 5% dextrose, and after homogenizing, it should be infused over 4 hours. And then dose 3, which is at a rate of 1 milli 100 milligrams per kilo, should be diluted in a liter of 5% dextrose, and infused over 16 hours after homogenizing. Now, such solutions are stable for 24 hours at controlled room temperature. Next, I would like to talk about neceritide, which is compatible with both 5% dextrose and normal saline. So we should reconstitute one 1.5 milligram vial of neceritide using 5 ml of IV fluid preferred. And they emphasize do not shake the vial. Just add the IV fluid and swirl gently till the product dissolves. Now we should rock the vial gently so that all surfaces, including the stopper, are in contact with the diluent. And that ensures we get complete reconstitution of the product. So continuous swirling and rocking until the entire powder is dissolved, after which the 1.5 milligrams should be further diluted in 250 ml of IV fluid of choice. So after adding the 1.5 milligrams to the 250 ml of IV fluid, we should invert the bag several times to ensure complete mixing. And the dose of this product should be as directed. We should titrate as directed by the clinical team. Now, such a product after homogenizing is stable for 24 hours when stored between 2 degrees and 25 degrees centigrade. Next, I would like to talk about ticadipin, which is compatible with both 5% dextrose and normal saline. So 25 milligrams should be diluted in a total of 240 ml of IV fluid of choice and the dose should be titrated according to the cardiac team or according to the intensivist direction. Such solutions after homogenizing are stable for 24 hours at controlled room temperatures. Next I would like to talk about nitroprusside. This product is only compatible with 5% dextrose, so do not use normal saline here. Now, 50 to 100 milligrams should be diluted in 250 ml of 5% dextrose, after which the dose should be titrated according to the cardiac team. Now, 0 0.5 to 10 micrograms per kilo per minute can be used as a tentative administration rate which can be titrated depending on the patient's blood pressure readings and you require an infusion pump when administering IV nitroprusside and such solutions after homogenizing are stable for 24 hours both at room temperature and under refrigeration and it's emphasized in literature that we protect 
such solutions from light for them to maintain their stability. Next, I would like to talk about norepinephrine, which is compatible with both 5% dextrose and normal saline. So we should dilute 4 to 32 milligrams in 250 ml of IV fluid of choice. And the dose should then be titrated according to the directions of the critical care team. And I would like to emphasize that a central line is required for the administration of norepinephrine. And extravasation may cause severe ischemic necrosis. So be very careful when administering this particular product. And after dilution and homogenizing, such a solution is stable at room temperature for 24 hours. And in literature, they emphasize that you should protect it from light for it to maintain its stability. Next, I would like to talk about octreotide, which is compatible with both 5% dextrose and normal saline. So, so doses of up to 500 mics should be diluted in 50 ml of IV fluid of choice and after homogenizing, we can then infuse over 15 to 30 minutes. Uh, you can also administer it via continuous infusion. Now in such cases, 600 mics are diluted in 250 ml of IV fluid and administered at a rate of 25 mics per hour. Now, 1,250 mics can be diluted in 250 ml and after homogenizing, we can then infuse at a rate of 50 mics per hour and such solutions are stable for 24 hours, both under refrigeration and at room temperature. Our next product is omeprazole, which is compatible with both 5% dextrose and normal saline. And we should first of all dissolve the contents of the vial in 5 ml of IV fluid before diluting further in 100 ml of IV fluid. Now, after homogenizing, such solutions can then be infused over 20 to 30 minutes, and such solutions are stable for 12 hours if they are diluted in normal saline, and for 6 hours if they are diluted in exos 5% at room temperature. Next, we'll talk about oxaliplatin, which is compatible with 5% dexo. So here, avoid the use of normal saline. So the 50 milligram vial should be dissolved in 10 ml of either water for injection or 5% dextrose, while the 100 milligram vial should be dissolved in 20 ml of the same. Then the doses should be diluted in 250 to 500 ml of 5% dextrose, and after homogenizing, such fluids can then be infused over at least two hours. Now, extended infusion time to six hours can be used if acute toxicities occur. Now, I'd like to emphasize that such solutions after homogenizing are stable for up to 24 hours under refrigeration. Next, I would like to talk about the conventional paclitaxel, which is compatible with both normal saline and 5% dextrose in water. So the dose should be diluted in half to one liter of the IV fluid recommended. And after homogenizing, such the final fluid should be infused over three hours. We can also opt to infuse it over a 24 hour period. Now, lower dosages may be added to smaller volumes of up to 250 ml. So if your patient is using the lower range, then you can dilute in a smaller volume of 250 ml of either normal saline or 5% dextrose. Now, such solutions after homogenizing are stable at ambient temperatures of approximately 25 degrees centigrade and uh, ambient lighting conditions for up to 27 hours. Our next product is Pamidronate, a radia, which is compatible with both 5% dextrose and normal saline. So 
This product is reconstituted by adding 10 ml of sterile water for injection to each vial. Then uh, we can then dilute 60 to 90 milligrams in a liter of IV fluid of choice. And after homogenizing, we can infuse the final solution over a 24 hour period. We can also dilute 60 to 90 milligrams in half a liter of the fluid and infuse over four hours. Now such solutions are stable at room temperature for 24 hours. Our next product is pancuronium, which is compatible with both 5% dextrose in water and normal saline. So we should dilute 12.5 to 25 milligrams in 250 ml of IV fluid of choice after homogenizing, the dose should be titrated according to your critical care or surgical team. Now for the continuous IV infusion, we should dilute to final concentrations of 0 0.01 to 1 mg per ml. And such solutions are stable for 48 hours, both under refrigeration and at room temperature. Next, I would like to talk about panitumumab, which is compatible with normal saline. So avoid using 5% dextrose here. So we should dilute doses of up to 1 gram in 100 ml of normal saline, homogenize and infuse over 60 minutes. Now, if the first infusion is tolerated well, then subsequent doses may be administered over 30 to 60 minutes. Now, for doses above 1 gram, we should dilute them in 150 ml of normal saline and infuse over 90 minutes. Now, we should mix the diluted solutions after adding to the bag by inverting gently. And the literature says do not shake. So avoid shaking when doing the admixture. And I would like to emphasize that such Diluted and homogenized products are stable at, for 24 hours under refrigeration. Our next product is pentoprazole, which is compatible with both 5% dextrose and normal saline. Now for the 40 mg dose, we should reconstitute the contents of a vial using 10 ml of normal saline which should then be further diluted with 100 ml of the IV fluid. Now for the 80 mg dose, we should reconstitute two vials each with 10 ml of the IV fluid, then uh, combine the contents of both vials and further dilute them with 80 ml of IV fluid. Then such fluids should then be infused over 15 minutes after homogenizing. Now the admixed solution may be stored at room temperature and must be used within 24 hours from the time of initial reconstitution. So beyond the 24 hour mark, just discard and prepare fresh solutions. Our next product is Pembrolizumab which is compatible with both 5% dextrose in water and normal saline. Now we should reconstitute by adding 2.3 ml of sterile water for injection along the vial wall. Yeah? Add it carefully along the wall. And uh, in literature, they emphasize that we do not add it directly to the lyophilized powder. And we should end up with a final concentration of 25 milligrams per ml after dissolution. So we should dissolve by slowly swelling the vial. And they emphasize do not shake, otherwise it would form. So we should allow for up to five minutes for the bubbles formed to dissipate. And uh, the final solution or the dose should be diluted to between one 10 mg per ml using an IV fluid of choice. 
So after diluting in the bag, we should mix gently and invert the contents of the bag to avoid foaming. And once it's homogenized, we should infuse the final product over 30 minutes. And such products are stable at room temperature for 6 hours or over 96 hours under refrigeration. Our next product is Pemetrexid which is compatible with normal saline, it should be reconstituted with normal saline, which is preservative free. So we do so by adding 4.2 ml to the 100 mg vial. If you're using the 500 mg vial, then you require 20 ml of normal saline. So the resulting solution is a 25 mg per ml solution. Now we should gently swirl after adding the normal saline until the powder is completely dissolved. Avoid shaking. Now after dissolution, we should then further dilute the solution or the dose in 100 ml of normal saline to obtain our infusion solution. And the manufacturer recommends a total volume of 100 ml. Now this final solution after homogenizing should be infused over a short duration of 10 minutes and uh, such diluted and homogenized solutions are stable for 24 hours under refrigeration. Pentamidine is the odd one out here because it's used in HIV management. Now the reason I fitted it here is because I forgot to present it alongside the antimicrobials in the first edition. Now it is compatible with 5% dextrose and we should dilute doses of up to 350 milligrams in 250 ml of 5% dextrose and after homogenizing such solutions should be infused over one hour and such Homogeneous solutions are stable at room temperature for 24 hours. The next product is phenobarbital, which is compatible with normal saline. So avoid using 5% dextrose in this case. For doses of up to 100 milligrams, we should dilute them in 50 ml of uh, normal saline. And after homogenizing, they should then be infused over half an hour. For doses exceeding the 100 mg mark, they should be diluted in 100 ml of normal saline, homogenized and infused over half an hour. Now, when diluted in normal saline to a concentration of 10 mg per ml, such solutions are stable for 4 weeks when stored under refrigeration. Just for your information. So, phenylephrine is our next product which is compatible with both normal saline and 5% dextrose but normal saline is a preferred IV fluid for dilution so for 25 milligrams of phenylephrine we should use 250 ml of IV fluid for 50 milligrams we should dilute in 500 ml and 100 milligram doses should be diluted in 500 ml of IV fluid of choice after homogenizing such Solutions should be titrated according to your cardiac team or according to your critical care team. Now, such solutions are stable for 14 days at room temperature. And in literature, they emphasize the fact that we should not refrigerate such IV admixes. The next product is phenytoin, which is compatible with normal saline. Avoid using 5% dextrose here. So we should dilute 1 gram in 180 ml of normal saline, homogenize and infuse over 20 to 30 minutes. Now, such a solution is stable for 2 to 4 hours at room temperature, and they emphasize in literature that they should never be refrigerated. So the infusion must be completed within four hours after dilution in normal saline. And it's also recommended that you use an inline 
two micron filter because of the remote potential for precipitation of the solution due to its instability at room temperature. Our next product is propranolone, which is compatible with both 5% dextrose in water and normal saline. So 1 mg doses should be diluted in 50 ml, 15 mg in 250 ml of the IV fluid and after homogenizing, the 1 mg dose can be infused over 10 to 15 minutes while the higher dose of 15 mg should be titrated according to your critical care or cardiac team. Now such IV admixed solutions are stable for 24 hours at room temperature. Next we'll talk about quinine which is compatible with both normal saline and 5% dextrose but 5% dextrose is the preferred IV solution for dilution. So we should dilute the concentrated solution of quinine in half a liter of 5% dextrose and uh, homogenize before infusing the final solution over four hours. Now such IV solutions are stable for up to 24 hours at room temperature and up to 48 hours under refrigeration. Next we'll talk about Raltitrexit which is compatible with both 5% dextrose in water and normal saline. We should con reconstitute each 2 mg vial using 4 ml of saline water for injection and that gives us a 0 0.5 mg per ml solution which should be further diluted for infusion by adding it to 50 to 250 ml of IV fluid of choice. Now after homogenizing, we can then infuse the resultant solution over 15 minutes and such solutions are stable for 24 hours under refrigeration. Next we'll talk about ranitidine which is compatible with both 5% dextrose in water and normal saline. So 50 mg should be diluted in 50 ml of IV fluid and homogenized before infusing over 20 to 30 minutes. Now we can also opt to advance it via continuous IV infusion, in which case 150 mg should be diluted in 250 ml of IV fluid, homogenized and infused slowly over 24 hours by continuous infusion. Now such solutions after dilution are stable for 48 hours at room temperature. Our next product is rasburicus which is compatible with normal saline so avoid using 5% dextrose in water in the V at mix of this particular product so we should endeavor to reconstitute the 1.5 milligram vials of rasburicus using 1 ml of the provided diluent now for the 7.5 milligram vials we should use 5 ml of the diluent and we should do so by adding the fluid and then gently swirling the vial. In literature, they recommend you don't shake. It's stressed and emphasized. Do not shake, otherwise the product would form. Now, after obtaining the solution, we should then uh, dilute it in such a manner that the final volume is 50 ml. So we should withdraw from the bag of the IV fluid a volume equivalent to the final volume of the dose of rasburicus that we need to add. After homogenizing the final solution, it should then be infused over 30 minutes. I would like to emphasize that the reconstituted solution and the solutions diluted for infusion may be stored for up to 24 hours under refrigeration. Next we'll talk about the new kid on the block, Remdesivir. Now we can uh, 
dilute it using the concentrate or lyophilized powder. And uh, when we opt to use the concentrate, then uh, the compatible fluid there is normal saline. So we should dilute the prescribed dose in 250 ml of normal saline. And uh, withdraw and discard a volume of normal saline from the bag, which is equivalent to the volume of remdesivir concentrate desired. So 40 ml corresponds to a dose of 200 milligrams of remdesivir and 20 ml corresponds to a dose of 100 milligrams of remdesivir concentrate. So you should transfer the remdesivir to the infusion bag and gently invert 20 times to mix the solution well. Now after homogenizing, we should then infuse the resultant solution in the bag over 30 to 120 minutes. And such solutions after homogenizing are stable at room temperature for up to 4 hours and under refrigeration for up to 24 hours. Now if we opt to use the lyophilized powder, the compatible solution remains normal saline so we should reconstitute with 19 ml of sterile water for injection. After adding the 19 ml, shake for 30 seconds to dissolve. Then we should allow the vial contents to settle for two to three minutes. Now, if the contents haven't fully dissolved, then we should repeat the process until the solution is clear. So the reconstituted vial now contains 100 milligrams in 20 ml of solution, which has a concentration of 5 milligrams per ml. And this should be further diluted in 100 to 250 ml of normal saline. So we should transfer the remdesivir to the infusion bag and gently invert 20 times to mix the solution thoroughly and homogenize it. Next we'll talk about remifentanil, which is compatible with 5% dextrose and with normal saline. Now we should prepare the solution by adding 1 ml to every 1 milligram and shake well. Now the Obtained solution should then be further diluted to a final concentration of either 20 or 25 or 50 or 250 mics per ml, depending on your team. And then an infusion pump should always be used to administer continuous infusions of remifentanil. Now this product is stable for 24 hours at room temperature after reconstitution and dilution in the IV fluids of choice. Our next product is Retoples, which is compatible with normal saline. So avoid using 5% dexos in water in the IV admix of this product. So 10 units should be diluted or dissolved in 10 ml of sterile water for injection, homogenized and administered over 2 minutes. And it's recommended you do not shake when reconstituting because of foaming. Slight foaming is normal and will dissipate if left standing for several minutes. Such a solution is stable for 4 hours at room temperature. And we can dilute 5 to 10 units in 100 to, 100 and to 500 ml of normal saline and infuse at a rate of 0 0.25 to 1 unit per hour. This can be used in catheter-directed thrombolytic therapy and uh, such a product is only stable for 24 hours at room temperature. Next we'll talk about rifampicin which is compatible with the 
both 5% dextrose in water and normal saline. So the 600 milligram vial should be dissolved using 10 ml of soil water for injection. So add the water and swirl gently to completely dissolve the antibiotic. Now the resultant solution can then be further diluted in half a liter of IV fluid of choice and after homogenizing, this should then be infused over three hours. Dilutions in normal saline are stable at room temperature for up to six hours, while dilutions in 5% dextrose are stable at room temperature for up to eight hours. Now, rifampicin dose may be added to 100 ml of the IV fluid and infused over a shorter duration of 30 minutes in cases where the patient is fluid restricted. So just remember that. Our next product is Rituximab, which is compatible with both 5% dextrose and normal saline. Now, the resultant solutions are stable both under refrigeration and at room temperature for 24 hours. So we should withdraw the dose and dilute it to a final concentration of 1 to 4 milligrams per ml using the IV fluid of choice. And we are advised to gently invert the bag after adding the rituximab concentrate to the bag. We should gently invert the bag to allow for proper mixing of the solution. And in literature they stress we should not shake the product to avoid forming and we should not mix it with other medications because of compatibility and stability reasons. Next we'll talk about rocuronium which is compatible with both 5% dextrose and normal saline. Now we should dilute this product to dilutions of up to 5 mg per ml using an appropriate IV fluid and such can then be administered or titrated at a rate recommended by your anesthetist and uh, such solutions are stable at room temperature for up to 24 hours. Next. We we'll talk about septokinase, which is uh, compatible with both 5% dextrose and normal saline. So we should reconstitute the vial with 4 to 5 ml of normal saline or sterile water for injection. So we should add the liquid and swirl gently to avoid foaming. So we should dilute 250,000 units in 50 ml of IV fluid and infuse after homogenizing over 30 minutes and if we are using doses of up to 1.5 million units then such should be diluted in 50 to 250 ml of IV fluid and infused over one hour. Now such diluted IV fluids after homogenizing are stable under refrigeration for 24 hours. Next we will talk about temozolomide. Uh, so we should reconstitute each 100 milligram vial using 41 ml of sterile water for injection to obtain a solution with a concentration of 2.5 milligrams per ml. Now after adding the sterile water for injection to the vial we should swirl gently and the literature says do not shake otherwise you'll end up with foaming. So we should then uh, place the dose without further dilution into a 250 ml empty sterile infusion bag and then infuse the solution over 90 minutes. Now such a solution is stable for 14 hours at room temperature. Our next product is Tenecteplus which is incompatible with 5% dextrose. So we should slowly 
add 10 ml of sterile water for injection to the product and they emphasize that we should push the syringe plunger down slowly to avoid foaming gently add the sterile water for injection to the powder and they stress that we should not shake when reconstituting so we should reconstitute by swelling gently now such a product is stable for 24 hours under refrigeration and for eight hours at room temperature and we should administer it as a single IV bolus over five seconds next we'll talk about terlipressin which is compatible with 5% dextrose and with normal saline so we should reconstitute the powder with the provided solvent and further dilute the resultant solution with 10 ml of normal saline solution now dilution in 50 ml of 5% dextrose for use in an intravenous infusion pump is also recommended and such solutions are stable under refrigeration for up to 24 hours so plan your timing very well when using telepressin next we'll talk about tocilizumab which is compatible with normal saline we should dilute the dose to a final volume of 100 ml by slowly adding it to normal saline so after adding and homogenizing we should then infuse the resultant solution over 60 minutes and we should use a dedicated IV line now if you must administer other products using the same line then flush thoroughly before and after administration of tocilizumab using normal saline now such a diluted solution is stable for up to 24 hours at room temperature and even under refrigeration our next product is topotecan which is compatible with both 5% dextrose in water and normal saline so we should begin by reconstituting each 4 mg vial using 4 ml of water for injection now the dose should then be diluted using 50 to 100 ml of IV fluid of choice and after homogenizing such a final solution should be infused over 30 minutes we can also choose to administer it via a 24 hour continuous infusion Please note that such solutions are stable for 24 hours at room temperature and for up to 7 days, one week to be specific, under refrigeration. Our next product is Tramadol, which is compatible with both 5% dextrose in water and normal saline. So we should dilute the dose prescribed in 50 ml of IV fluid, preferably normal saline, and after homogenizing such a solution should be infused over 15 minutes such products are stable for up to 24 hours after preparation at normal light conditions at room temperature now if protected from light then the stability is up to 48 hours next product is an examic acid which is compatible with both 5% dextrose in water and normal saline now if, uh, one gram dose should be diluted in 50 to 100 ml of IV fluid homogenized and infused over 10 to 30 minutes while two gram doses should be diluted in 50 to 250 ml of IV fluid homogenized and infused of over 20 minutes so the minimum duration there should be 20 minutes it can exceed 20 minutes now the infusion rate should not exceed 100 milligrams per minute so please note that as you guide the rest of your clinical teams now such products are stable 
under refrigeration for a maximum of 24 hours. Next, I would like to talk about trastuzumab, which is compatible with normal saline. So we should reconstitute 60 mg vials using 3 ml of sterile water for injection, 150 mg vials using 7.4 ml of sterile water for injection, and 440 mg vials, which are the multidose, using 20 ml of bacteriostatic water for injection. Now we should slowly add the diluent and swirl gently to aid reconstitution. And they emphasize in literature that we should not shake to avoid forming. And it's also emphasized in literature that we should never ever use 5% dextrose in preparing uh, trastuzumab solutions. The two are incompatible. And uh, we should then dilute the trastuzumab dose in 250 ml of normal saline. Uh, and we should do so by gently inverting the bag to mix the solution. That is, after drawing the reconstituted solution, we should then further dilute the concentrate in 250 ml and then gently invert the bag. And they stress that we should not shake, otherwise the solution would form. And uh, the initial infusion should be over 90 minutes. Now, subsequent doses can be done or infused over between 30 to 60 minutes, depending on how well the patient tolerates the solutions. <coughs> now, such solutions may be refrigerated for up to 24 hours. Our next uh, medication is ustekinumab, which is compatible with normal saline. <coughs> now, after calculating the appropriate dose and the volume of ustekinumab required, uh, using the conversion of 130 milligrams per 26 ml vials, we should withdraw an equal volume of fluid from the IV bag that we'll use for dilution, which is normal saline in this case, and then add a ustekinumab dose to the bag. Now the final volume of the bag should be 250 ml. Now after adding the ustekinumab dose, we should then gently mix the contents of the bag by, by inversion. Now, after homogenizing, we should then infuse the final product over at least one hour. And they emphasize in literature that we should not freeze the diluted solutions. Now, the diluted solution for infusion may be stored at room temperature for up to seven hours. So time management is of essence here. Our next product is Velproic Acid which is compatible with both 5% dextrose and with normal saline. Now we should dilute the dose prescribed in 50 to 100 ml of IV fluid, homogenize and infuse over an hour. And in literature they recommend we do not refrigerate the final diluted solution. So this solution is stable at controlled room temperature for at least 24 hours when it's stored in glass or in PVC. Our next product is Vasopressin, which is compatible with both 5% dextrose and with normal saline. So we should dilute 100 units in 100 to 500 ml of IV fluid, and we can also choose to dilute 200 units in 250 ml of IV fluid. Now, after dilution, we homogenize and the infusion rate is directed by the critical care team or the managing physician. And uh, this product is for single use only. So prepare what you require. Avoid storing any leftovers. Next, we'll talk about vacuronium, which is compatible with both 5% dextrose in water solutions and normal saline. 
we should dilute 10 milligrams in 100 ml of uh, preferred IV fluid, 20 milligrams in 100 ml of IV fluid, 50 milligrams in 500 ml of IV fluid, and such fluids after dilution and homogenizing are stable under refrigeration for 24 hours. Now we should then infuse them at a rate of 0 0.8 to 1.4 mics of vacuronium bromide per kilo per minute during neuromuscular blockade and we can also choose to infuse at a rate of 80 to 100 mics per kilo and 20 to 30 mics per kilo for intubation and for maintenance respectively. Our next product is Venofa, which is compatible with normal saline. So for 100 milligram doses, we should dilute them in 100 ml of normal saline, homogenize and infuse over at least 15 minutes. For 200 milligram doses, they should be diluted in the same volume of normal saline and infused over the same duration. Now, 300 milligram doses after dilution should be infused over one and a half hours. 400 milligram doses should be infused over 2.5 hours and 500 milligram doses should be diluted in 250 ml of normal saline and infused over 3.5 to 4 hours. Now such solutions are stable for seven days at controlled room temperature or under refrigeration when they are left in infusion bags. Next, we'll discuss verapamil, which is compatible with 5% dextrose and normal saline. So we can, in the ICU setting, administer it via continuous infusion if warranted. So we should dilute 50 milligrams, uh, which corresponds to a volume of 20 ml in 80 ml of IV fluid, so that we end up with a concentration of 0.5 milligrams per ml. Now for doses of 40 milligrams which corresponds to a volume of uh, 16 ml we should dilute them in 84 ml of IV fluid and end up with a concentration of 0 0.4 milligrams per ml. So the infusion rate should be titrated by your cardiac or clinical care teams and such dilutions are stable for 24 hours at room temperature when the products are protected from light. Next, we'll talk about vinblastin, which is compatible with Ringer's lactate and with normal saline. So avoid using 5% dextrose in this particular case. So we should start by adding 10 ml of normal saline to 10 milligrams of vinblastin sulfate uh, for injection in a sterile vial. Then we should dilute the obtained solution in 25 to 50 ml of IV fluid, homogenize and infuse over at least 30 minutes. Our solutions diluted for infusion, which should be at a concentration of around 20 mics per ml, are stable for up to 21 days if protected from light. Now they are stable under refrigeration for a maximum of 28 days. Our next product will be Vincristin, which is also compatible with both 5% dextrose and normal saline. We should dilute the prescribed dose in 25 to 50 ml of IV fluid, homogenize, and infuse over 5 to 10 minutes. Such Diluted IV solutions are stable for one week under refrigeration and for two days at room temperature. Our next product is Vinorelbine, which is also compatible with both 5% dextrose solution in water and normal saline. The dose should be diluted in 50 ml of IV fluid, homogenized and infused over 6 to 10 minutes. Such solutions are stable for 24 hours in the fridge and at room temperature. 
Next, we have zoledronic acid, which is compatible with both 5% dexo solution in water and normal senai. Now, we should dilute the concentrate in 100 ml of IV fluid prior to infusion. After homogenizing, we can infuse the resultant solution over between 15 and 30 minutes. Now, such diluted solutions are stable under refrigeration for a total of 24 hours. So my references include Lexicom, from which I drew most of the information, Global RPH, the clinician's ultimate reference, and I also got a lot of information for, from summary of product characteristics of various products, and I also referred to prescribing information in the form of literature inserts from various products. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, my fellow pharmaceutical practitioner. I hope after viewing this video, you have made up your mind to return to your first love, to own our profession and to take full responsibility for it. Let us actively begin to do IV admixture in our various institutions in order to ensure our patients receive infusions of safe and efficacious medications. The time to make a difference is now. The time to make our mark is now. The time to earn our lost respect is now. Thank you very much for watching.